Facts First presents 20 Tech Inventions That'll Make You Nostalgic Technology is continually improving. It's almost as if once you can afford to buy the newest thing, something new has already come out. Currently, smartphones, touchscreens, and smart TVs are the current technology that we all know. Over the years, though, there have been a lot of different in things. Here are 20 tech inventions that might make you nostalgic remembering the old days. Or maybe you'll just be thankful that those days are gone. Before we get into our list, jump down to the comments and let us know if there's something that you used to have that's no longer available and you're really kind of sorry about that. Tell us in the comments. Also, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos. Laser discs were the size of dinner plates, and they were designed to replace the VHS tape. They provided a lot better picture quality than VHS, but the size of these things? That's what turned most people off. They could easily be damaged, too, so they just did not get the attention the manufacturers had hoped. What the laser disc did, though, was pave the way for the much smaller DVD that we all know. People who are in their 40s and older you likely remember your teacher bringing in the overhead projector to class. That was a great day whenever she brought that in, wasn't it? The teacher would pull down the film screen, turn on the projector, and put the notes under the light so that it'd project on the wall. Today, we can easily project our computer screens, making the heavy, oversized overhead projectors a thing of the past. Sega introduced the Dreamcast, but it wasn't the game system itself that made this a loser early on. It was the time that Sega introduced it. The release date was right around the same time that PlayStation 2 and Xbox came out. These two gaming systems were too much for the Sega Dreamcast to compete with. For most people, the Walkman was the greatest invention in the world. I can't tell you how many Saturdays I spent uh, mowing the grass with a Walkman on my hip. Well, finally, I mean, you could walk around and listen to music either from the radio or headphones, and it played cassette tapes. Whoo, man! You could listen to your Walkman using headphones so only you could hear it. What technology! Well, the Walkman did remain popular until the CD took the place of the cassette tape. When that happened, the Discman came around and, well, it sucked. So the whole Walkman idea disappeared forever until iPods came around. Samsung is one of the leading brands of cell phones today. When they came out with their Galaxy Note, it got a lot of attention, just not the good kind of attention. People all over the world were reporting that their notes were catching fire. Turned out the technology inside the phone was prone to catching fire, making this Samsung's most deadly device. They made a few changes, and today people are buying the safer version of the Note. Anybody remember the Zune? It was the same thing as the iPod, but a lot of people have never heard of it. That's because it came out after the iPod, which had already cornered the market for easily accessible music. It did not take long for the Zune to zoom out of existence. In 1975, Sony came out with the Betamax. They were hoping to compete with the VCR, which was growing in popularity. You might remember going to the video store to rent a movie and you'd find both beta and VCR tapes. It was a long time ago. If you're under the age of 30, you probably don't remember. Anyway, the reason the Betamax didn't last was that Sony wouldn't allow outside companies to manufacture tapes due to licensing agreements. So that meant everything Betamax made was expensive. Since VCR tapes were a lot cheaper, the VCR won, and the Betamax went down in history as a bad mistake. The typewriter was really popular before the computer was invented. In fact, I'll bet some of you still have a typewriter in your house right now. If you do, let us know in the comments. Typewriters had problems, though, such as not being able to correct an error once it was made. Oh yeah, there were a few typewriters that you could backspace and use that white strip, that correction tape, or even white out, but that didn't always cover up the entire error and it still made the paper look like crud. Also, needing to change the ribbon all the time, that was an issue. When the computer was invented, the typewriter became obsolete. People liked the idea of being able to go back and correct an error with just one click. The one thing we do miss, though, is, is that ding at the end of a line. Tap, 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 ding! Oh, come on. Tell me you don't miss that. 
Before Mark Zuckerberg took over the world of social media with Facebook, Tom took over the world with MySpace. Everybody had a MySpace, and you could create a custom background with a few of your favorite songs. Well, when Facebook went public and anybody could get an account, even those without a college email address, well, MySpace started losing its users. And eventually, people just gave up their MySpace altogether, and Facebook became the reigning champion. Cinerama. It was a theater that offered an overhead view of the screen. It was kind of an early attempt at IMAX, which used multiple projects to show a movie. The cost to run multiple projectors, though, was so high, most theaters just didn't want to pay the extra cost to install it. Soon, Cinerama was gone, and people have long since forgotten it even existed. The inventor of the Segway had some very high hopes. They were really popular with mall security guards, but, well, they didn't take off the way that the inventor had hoped. Most people believe that the Segway would become the new cool form of transportation, and there was even an episode of Frasier dedicated to the Segway. Unfortunately, they did not take off as the manufacturer had hoped, and today it's highly unlikely you're going to see anybody riding one. Too bad. I really wanted one back in the day. People loved digital audio tape for years, and they were thrilled with the performance. Unfortunately, those in the music industry weren't happy. If a person had a dual cassette player, they could put a cassette tape containing music in one slot and a blank tape in the other and dub the entire tape. How many of us did that, huh? Well, that was not helping those in the music industry who were trying to sell cassette tapes. But how else are we supposed to make a mixtape for the girl that we have a crush on, huh? Anyway, in 1992, the industry swayed Congress to pass the Audio Home Recording Act, which would prevent the pirating of music. Jerks. It's around the same time the CD gained popularity. The Apple Newton PDA was Apple's first attempt at a touchscreen, and it was its first attempt to break into the world of smart technology. Unfortunately, there were so many glitches in the device, people didn't want to waste their money on it. When Apple came out with the iPhone, which of course had a touchscreen, they finally got it right, and this device became the most popular smartphone in the world. In fact, one of the most popular tech devices, period. Before Netflix, before Hulu, before Disney Plus or CBS All Access, DivX tried to corner the video streaming market. The streaming platform didn't do very well, though, because the user had to download too many different programs just to get the platform to work right. It never caught on, and it's now lost somewhere in the digital wasteland. For centuries, people relied on maps, like paper ones, to get around in areas that they weren't familiar with. If you had to go somewhere, you had to plot the entire route out on a map. Today, thanks to GPS and navigation apps, all you have to do is type in an address and you'll get step-by-step -step directions to get there. Kids who were born in the 90s and the 2000s, you'll probably never know what it was like to rely on a map. For years, doctors were the only people who carried pagers. In the 90s, they became available to the public. Just about anybody could carry around a pager and get beeped when somebody wanted to talk to them. To sell their products to people of all ages, you could buy different colored pagers and pagers with different designs. When the cell phone became popular, people stopped using the phrase, page me, and started saying, text me or DM me. Landline telephones. They used to be the only option if you wanted to call somebody. Over the years, the landline changed a lot. First, the only type of phone you could buy was a rotary phone. You had to put your finger on the correct number and then spin the dial all the way around. You had to wait for the dial to spin back to its original position before you could dial the next number. It would often take about 30 seconds or more to dial a phone number, and if you made a mistake while dialing, well, you had to start completely over. People were thrilled when the push-button phone was invented. It made dialing a lot easier and a lot faster. The last major upgrade to the landline phone was the cordless phone, which allowed you to walk around and talk on the phone. Still, you had to be close to the base if you wanted to talk, so you couldn't really leave the house. Now that everybody has a cell phone, though, and plans are inexpensive, people aren't really using landlines. According to a recent study, there are a lot more cell phone subscribers in the United States than there are landline subscribers, and I'm guessing that's not going to change anytime soon. 
the Pebble Smartwatch. Do you remember this one? I don't. Kickstarter's the company that funded the watch. It never really made an impact because people figured they didn't really need a watch that could do everything a cell phone could already do. The Pebble Smartwatch was just too far ahead of its time to become popular. Google Glass. It was a set of futuristic eyewear that could put everything on your smartphone right in your face. You could access your text messages, email, your phone book, and just about anything that you had stored on your smartphone. The device never really took off, though, because it was really expensive and people didn't want to pay so much for something that they could do on their phone. Plus, you really looked like a dork walking around wearing it. Virtual Boy. It was released in 1995, and it was actually ahead of its time. This technology never became too popular, though, because the headgear was really large and clunky. Kind of like those Google Glasses, even more so, though. Those who did own the Virtual Boy they complained of headaches, and the display on the screen caused serious eye strain. The new version of Virtual Reality weighs a lot less, and it doesn't cause any of the ailments that the Virtual Boy did. Did you use any of these technologies, and are you glad they're gone, or do you wish they were back? Tell us in the comments and subscribe for more!